Okay, so the first thing we're going to do <coughs> is go in and modify uh, N3's ionRC file. Uh, so again, here we are in that config directory, N3 ionRC. And the only thing that we really need to change here is this is uh, sort of the, the, the format of these slides is, you know, from and to. So it, in, the, in the current set, we've got an initialization command initializing this as node uh, ion node number one, <coughs> and we need to change that to initializing it as, as node number three. So that's easy enough to do. We can change that to a three uh, and write that out. Uh, then we need to modify node 3's BPRC file. This is where we have all the endpoint definitions, uh, as well as the protocols and index and outdex. So there's quite a bit of stuff that's in here. The, the first bit being all of the endpoints, <coughs> right? So uh, the BPRC file is defining the endpoints uh, of which the node is a member. So this one was copied from node 1, so all of his endpoints are of the form uh, IPN colon 1 dot something. So we need to go through <laughs> me, and uh, uh, fix those. Oops, three. Hey. Uh, and fix those so that they're, uh, they reference node 3, not node 1. And again, I've got several of those, uh, several things in here that are, are used for various things in the, uh, in the class. So things uh, like the service number 1 is, uh, I use it for uh, uh, BP echo, so that's the thing that responds to pings. Uh, I'll tend to use five and six for uh, for network management. Uh, again, we haven't talked about network management yet. Uh, and then 63 and 64 are used for uh, CFDP. So once we've done that, <coughs> we can change all the endpoints. Uh, we need to add a protocol line to tell it that TCP is a thing. Uh, so we can go Uh, so here's the protocol line for LTP. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, for this one, since we're not going to be using LTP at all, we can just replace this uh, with TCP. So we can say TCP uh, 1400 100. Again, that's sort of the nominal uh, payload and header size for TCP segments and some sort of data, uh, a data rate that uh, ION should assume is available on that link. I just gave it a meg. Uh, we also need index and outducts for TCP, and we're not going to need uh, the LTP ones, so we can just change this to be uh, an induct for TCP. Uh, so we're going to listen on uh, listen for TCP coming into any interface on port 4556, and the, the, the process that's going to be processing uh, things that come in there is the, the TCP CLI, the TCP Convergence Layer Input. Uh, and we're also going to need an out duct uh, to talk to node 2. So we can go down here and say we want an out duct for TCP to 10, 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 5, 6. And again, the, the TCP CLO function is actually done by the TCP CLI. Uh, daemon, so we don't need to give it a, a, an application down here. Now, how did I know that this was supposed to be 10.0.1.2? Well, if I go back here, this is node 3 over here, and I want it to be talking to uh, node 2. If I move node 2 over here so that it's got a lighter background, I can see that his IP address is 10.0.1.2 uh, with a 24-bit net mask. So that's how I know that this is the, the address that I want to be talking to. Okay, so uh, N3's IPNRC, because nodes two and three are neighbors, uh, we need a plan in each direction to get from node three to node two. <coughs> so N3's IPNRC, uh, right now it's got a plan using LTP. So we don't want that. What we want is a plan to get to node two, and it's going to be TCP 10, 0, 1. Two and go ahead four five five six.
So we need to do sort of the same things on, on the N2 side. Uh, we need to tell node 2 that it needs a plan. Uh, now here we need to just add uh, a new one. We can't, we're not just replacing this one. Node 2 is still using LTP to get to node 1. So we can add a plan to node 3, TCP 1001, I suspect that's 1011. Uh, 10013 or 556. And again, the way to figure that out is, uh, oops, I want to accidentally added a new node here at the bottom. Let me get rid of that. Uh, the way to know that is here's node 2 and here's node 3. Node 3's address is 10013. Uh, so that's what we want to be pointing TCP at from node 2 uh, in order to get to node 3. Uh, node 2's BPRC file. So again, uh, as before, uh, in the example before, we need to tell it that TCP is a thing. So we're going to add a line here that says that TCP is uh, a protocol that we want to use. Now we're going to need to add new inducts and outducts for TCP. So we're going to add an induct for TCP. Listening uh, on anything, and we're going to use TCP CLI as the, the input process for that. We're going to add an out duct that is TCP to 10013, oops, 134556. And, and we don't need, again, we don't need a, an output process because the, the output is handled by TCP CLI. Uh, finally, now we've, so what we've done there is uh, we've got enough information now to stitch these two nodes together, uh, and, but we don't have them entered into a, a contact plan. So ION, when it reads the contact plan and decides who it, can, uh, who it should be able to communicate with, uh, there's no contact that actually says that these two nodes can communicate. So we're going to add one of those finally uh, in the contacts.ionrc file. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zip down to the bottom. So we're going to do two things. We need to add a range. Um, and the sort of the syntax here uh, is uh, we're adding a range between nodes from, from node 2 to node 3. These are times. Uh, there's a, a, a couple of different ways that you can enter times into a contact plan, either as uh, as, as delta times or absolute times. These are all uh, entered as, as delta times, so it's interpreted as zero seconds from when the, uh, when the ion node starts to, to a thousand seconds after it starts. Uh, it's much easier when you're dealing with things that you might want to run several times to have uh, these, these delta values in here rather than absolute times. Uh, but if you were running a mission, you'd probably put absolute times there. Uh, and, and especially since uh, with delta times, uh, if different nodes start up at slightly different times, as they will in, uh, in the, uh, the, the dev kit simulations, uh, they'll have slightly different versions of when their connectivity is. Uh, whereas if you enter absolute times there, then uh, they have uh, the same notion of when that, uh, that contact is going to start but you then have to go through and modify all of your contacts and ranges every time you want to rerun uh, the simulation, which is a pain. Uh, so we're going to add a range, uh, and, and the rest of this statement is uh, from, from time 0 to time 1000, the, the distance between node 2 and node 3 is one light second. And we're going to add uh, the, the, just the reverse range in the other direction. So it says the distance from 3 to 2 is also 1 light second. You can get away with only having one of these if you enter the lower numbered uh, node number first and you don't have a, a, a peer range statement, then ION will assume that the range is symmetric. Uh, but this allows you to, uh, to have asymmetric ranges if you need that for whatever reason. And so I generally will just put both in. Uh, and in addition to the range statements, we also need a contact. So we're going to add a contact, again, from time relative time 0 to time 1,000, from node 2 to node 3. And we're just going to say it's a, mega, uh, a, a megabit. And I'm going to take that. I'm just going to duplicate it and switch it around so that I have connectivity in both directions 
uh, from, from between nodes two and three uh, for the first thousand seconds after you start up the, the simulation. So with that, if I then shut this down and head over here and start this up, then Core has come up and figured out that these should be connected because the distances are all relatively small. If I then double click on node, uh, node 1 here and get a shell, I should be able to do bping from IPN 1.3 to IPN 3.1 and actually have things come back. So what we did there is you know, by, we, we added this extra node, we stitched it in by telling it that it had a TCP uh, convergence layer connection to N2, we told N2 that it had a TCP convergence layer connection to N3, uh, modified the plans of these two nodes so that they know about each other as neighbors. And then finally, by, by adding that kind of the range and the contact into the contact plan, that's what tells N1 that, you know, when N1 goes to route to N3, it looks in the contact plan and says, okay, uh, you know, I need to get to N3. Who can get there? Well, N2 can get there, and I know how to get to N2. Uh, and, and so that's how it forms the, the multi-hop path. Um, so as I said before that I was going to talk a little bit, you know, now might be a good time to talk about sort of the structure of, of some of what's going on uh, down in here. So, so I'm going to go ahead and close or make a new one. Um, so this is, is core, not ion, right? So this is a, a general framework for doing general, uh, it's designed to do uh, simulation of mobile ad hoc networks. Uh, but it'll do fixed wireless, fixed wireline networks as well. So in, in core, if you just take you know, one of these nodes and drop it down, uh, you can generate yourself a small network, connect things together. It will automatically assign you IP addresses. And core knows a lot about IP, and it was designed that way, right? So uh, if I configure one of these nodes, uh, it's got a, a, an IPv4 and an IPv6 address already assigned to it. I can right click on it and go down here to services and and core knows about starting up uh, services uh, automatically that have to do with you know IP kinds of things so OSPF is a routing protocol zebra is a, uh, a routing framework and these are the the various demons that are that are sitting inside this is actually the, the quagga version you can turn on various other things in in security you can turn on IP your IP forwarding is turned on, turn on SSH, uh, SSH demons, uh, and, and the, the, the ION stuff is all patched in through a set of user-defined scripts that, uh, that go and look in the directory that, that contains the IMN file, and, and they assume some structure there and, and then run things out of that. So this is, is sort of the overview of, of what that assumed structure is. Uh, and, and this is the same for both the NASA ION course and the uh, and the dev kit. There's uh, there are a bunch of directories uh, that are you know the various scenarios like exercise 2B. Uh, there's a common directory that's in here. Uh, in uh, in the in the common directory, there's a script called general setup.sh, uh, and and that's sort of a key to uh, getting all of ION up and up and running. When and now I'm going to go back. What I'll do is we'll open up. Well, may as well let's be exercise two B or one B. Uh, if I look at this and right click on it and go and look at its services, and, and this one there's user defined is selected. It's got this white background, and it's also got a, a green background in this little wrench here. <laughs> So, oh. <laughs> oh, excuse me. so what that means is that there's some, uh, you know, this, the, the like an SSH here with a white background and no little green background with the wrench is no extra configuration. This is the default configuration for SSH here. We've got a little bit of extra user configuration. So if I click on that, it's it'll tell me what that is. And there are there are three things that are that are hiding under here. 
there's a set of files, there's a set of directories, and then startup and, uh, and, and shutdown operations. So here, uh, this is just a shell script that gets executed, uh, the, uh, defines a file and named setup.sh, and the file sets the directory. Uh, session file name is, is set by core as the directory that contains the .imn file that defines the, uh, the scenario. And, and so this is just setting my dir to be the, the directory that contains that file name and, and then sourcing this general setup.sh file out of, that, uh, out of that directory. The directory structure here talks about uh, particular directories that are private to each one of the virtual nodes. In, in core, really all of those virtual nodes uh, are sharing the same file system. They're very lightweight virtualization, uh, so they're all they're almost like Docker containers or even lighter than that. Um, so they're sharing the same file system. If you have particular directories that you want to, to appear to be different for each one of the nodes, uh, you've got to specify that here, and then they get, they get mounted uh, onto the uh, onto the virtual nodes in the right way. So here, what we've got is we say uh, slash bar slash ion uh, is separate for each one of the nodes, and and we do that in case we want to turn on uh, uh, reversibility in the SDR, and we can store the uh, uh, ion SDR in slash bar slash ion, uh, and then it'll be separate for each one instead of trying to share uh, the same journal for all the nodes, which would be bad. Um, and then there's also startup and shutdown commands, uh, things that run automatically. Uh, and so apparently I'm adding IP routes uh, for 10.0.1.0 and 10.0.4.0. I'm not quite sure why those are there. Uh, maybe even there for, for another thing I was doing. Uh, and then also uh, sourcing this setup.sh file. So, uh, what ends up happening if we go now back over here, and we'll I'm going to CD up into just the exercise 1B uh, directory. So here's that general setup.sh uh, file that was uh, that we mentioned before. And again here, this this sourcing the setup.sh file. This is a file. Uh, this is setup.sh. It's a file that gets built uh, sort of by core when the node is instantiated. So when the node gets instantiated, it gets a setup.sh file made for it that has this content. And then this thing's job is to actually run that uh, when the node starts. And because what then and what this does is it knows where it where the IMN file came from, it reaches back up into that directory and runs general setup.sh. So that's that's sort of a complicated way of saying get back up, find this file, uh, and run it. Um, if we then look in general setup.sh, it's doing uh, a bunch of stuff for making sure the library path is right. It links or copies files down into uh, the virtual node. Uh, it does some stuff. There's a some common setup uh, that also happens, and then it will try to, to run any node-specific setup file uh, that's in there. Um, so, uh, and if we run this, I'm just going to cancel out of all that and run it. And I'm going to double click on one of these guys and get a shell so that we can go poke around. So this is the, the, the shell that I've got on, uh, on node 2, sort of the same way we've been doing. But if you look at where this lives, it lives under slash temp slash pycore uh, n2.com. And and while this is a, a node that is running uh, with you know its own process set that is much much smaller than uh, the number of processes that are running on the host, and if you do an if config, the the network stack is jailed. So you know these inter these are the interfaces on the virtual node that are separate from the virtual from the interfaces on the host. Um, you can do things like cd into root and look around, and this is root on the host. Uh, so you, if you're uh, interested in, in sharing uh, configuration information or, or you know, have a need for 
sort of a, a, a back channel of files between nodes, you can use the host file system to do that. Um, uh, and this was node two, so you can CD back here. Again, here's the, the general, uh, that's uh, the, the general parameters.sh. Here's the setup.sh file that was built for us, right? So it looks the same as, uh, uh, as before, although there's no carriage return on the end of that file. So it's actually, uh, this is setting the directory and there's the file and the rest of that is prompt. Uh, but, but it's essentially sourcing uh, uh, general setup.sh out of the host, which takes care of going and getting everybody started. One of the things that gets copied in here through the common directory is this core ionconfig.sh. This is the thing that's actually starting ion. Uh, so if we look in core ionconfig.sh, uh, it's going to you know, echo a couple of things about uh, you know what's the node name into the log. Uh, I had some things that were waiting for connectivity. Uh, that's largely deprecated now. Uh, it was there to try to wait for uh, IP connectivity to start up before uh, before instantiating some of the the ion stuff, so that in particular uh, uh, you know connections would be would be happy by the time they tried to start up. But I, uh, that's largely largely deprecated now. Um, uh, but we do things like okay, so we're going to start setting up uh, it. Uh, uh, makes links to various things uh, in the config file. So this is trying to make links to uh, things that, that have our node number in them in the config directory. Uh, and then finally, the contacts.inrc file. Um, there was some stuff that, that was, this is, this is probably deprecated as well. It was a result of uh, changes in the config file syntax for LTP spans. Uh, and I was moving between different versions of LTP and, and tried to make something that would, that would account for that. Um, but you get down here and, and then we get to starting ion. So it's going to run ion admin on the INRC file. It's then going to run ion admin on the contacts file. And that's how the contacts, contact plan uh, gets incorporated. Uh, it runs LTP admin. So here it's, we're running down through the various admin uh, programs until we get to uh, uh, CFTP admin, and if one of them's not there, then it just doesn't get uh, it, it doesn't get invoked, um, and all of that stuff ends up going to core ionconfig.out. Uh, so that's useful if something is going wrong. That's another place. If you're running, uh, if you're operating in core, uh, if you're using the the dev kit, that's a place that you can go uh, and look for for some possible uh, issues. That's also, I talked before about the watch characters. If we turn on watch characters, like we'll do in a, uh, in a, a later example, this is where a lot of the watch characters are going to show up because core ion config.sh is the thing that invokes uh, uh, the various ion admin programs. And, and the standard out and standard error for the admin programs is where the watch characters end up. And so this is redirecting the watch, all the watch characters from uh, the various admin programs into here. So this is where we'll go and, and poke around and look for uh, for those when it comes time.